friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about Rabin Carp substring search algorithm. So what is a substring search? You're given a pattern and you're given a text. You have to find if this pattern exists in this text or not. So these are some of the algorithms for doing substring search. In another video, I already talked about brute force way of doing substring search, KMP algorithm and Z algorithm. In this video, I'm going to talk about Rabin Carp algorithm for substring search and in future videos, hopefully we can cover the rest of the algorithm. So Rabin Carp is easiest of these algorithms. Rabin Carp uses hashing to find if pattern exists in text or not. So next, let's see how Rabin Carp algorithm works. Let's say I have this text and this pattern and I want to find if this pattern exists in this text or not. So first thing we do is we generate a hash of this pattern and let's say the hash of this pattern ABC is a number X and I will explain later on how this hash is generated. Then we are going to take all the substrings of same length as the pattern and compare their hash with this pattern's hash. If both the hashes are same, then we compare that substring with the pattern to make sure that the substring is same as, uh, same as the pattern. Otherwise, we move on to the next character. So here, we take first three characters. Let's say this generates a hash y1. So then we compare this y1 with this x and both these numbers are different which means that this abd cannot be same as this abc because if the hash is not same then there is a guarantee that the substring is not same as this, uh, this, uh, this uh, pattern. So then we move on by one more character bda. In this case, let's say coincidentally it also generates the same pattern as this one. So in this case, there is a match of patterns. So what we do is we compare this pattern with this substring. So this A is not same as this B, which means that uh, this uh, we don't have a pattern match here. So again, even though there was a match of the hash, the actual substring did not match. So we move on to the next character and this time let's say this generates a hash y2 and then y2 is not same as x so again there is nothing we can do about it and we move on by one more character and then finally we generate this uh, hash for this one so the hash for abc should be the same as hash for this abc so this generates x so once we have a match in the hash we compare a b and c and that is also a match so we return the index of this a and which is the answer for the substring search so the big thing you hear here is how do we efficiently generate the hash function hash values and let's look at that next. So we will use what is called a rolling hash function to calculate and recalculate hash. In this example here I'm using a prime number 3 to keep uh, calculation simple but in reality you should use a bigger prime number like 101. Also here A is 1, B is 2, 3 is C and so on. But in reality you should use their ASCII value so A should be 97, B should be 98 and so on. So first, let's see how we calculate a rolling hash uh, function. So let's say we were trying to calculate the hash for substring of length 3. So here there are three substrings of length 3. This, ABE, BDE, BED and then EDA. So first we have A, B, E. So to calculate the hash, we take the value of A as is, so 1 plus we take the value of B, so 2 into this prime number, so 3 raised to 1 plus value of E, which is 5 into this prime number raised to 2. So this value will come out to be 1 plus 6, 7, 7 plus 45, 52. So this is our initial hash. Now from this, when we are rolling over, so when we are calculating the hash for BED, then somehow we want to do it efficiently and do not want to calculate the hash for B, repeat the process, entire process again. So let's look at BED. So BED. Here B will be 2 plus E will be 5 into 3 raised to 1 plus D will be 4 into 3 raised to 2. So somehow we, when, when we are rolling over and when we are removing A and adding D from this hash we want to come to this hash efficiently. So the way we do it is first we know that A is leaving. So you can safely subtract A from 52. So this you subtract the value of A which will be 51. Then you, 
divide 51 by 3, which is a prime number. So you're left with 17. And then you add to this 17 the value of this new character. So uh, value of new character is 4 into the prime number 3 raised to uh, the pattern's length raised minus 1, so 2. So basically what we did here was first we subtracted A. So when A is subtracted, we'll, we are left with this. Then I divided this with number 3, which is our prime number. So when we did that, this became, this is gone. So we are left with 2 plus, this becomes 1. So what happened is this now starts to look something like this. And then finally, I added 4 into 3 raised to 2 here. So this is the third step. And this is finally 17 plus uh, 36 which will be 53. So this is our new hash function. So in three steps, we calculated the hash for BED from ABE. First, subtract the value of the old character from the hash, then divide that number by prime number, which is three, and then add to that prime number, prime raised to m minus one. So m here is the length of the pattern, so prime raised to two into the value of new character, and that's how we end up with this value, 53. So from here, we end up 53. And as you can see, this value is also 53. Let's look at another example. So now, we have the pattern, we have the, uh, we have the hash for BD, and let's try to get it for EDA. So EDA, value of E is 5, plus value of D is uh, 4 into 3 raised to 1 plus value of a is 1 into 3 raised to 2. So repeating the same process, first we sub this character is rolling out, b is rolling out. So first we subtract the value of b from this hash. So once the value of b subtracted, this is gone. So this becomes 5, 53 minus 2, 51. Then we divide this by the prime number, which is 3. So this becomes 17. So basically what happened was this becomes 5 and this becomes uh, 4 into 3 raised to 1. So now this starts to look like this. And then finally we add whatever the new character is coming in. So 17 plus whatever the new character is coming in. So 1 into 3 raised to 2. And this is 9 plus 17, 26. Which is the hash for, which is the hash for EDA. So this is how rolling hash works. And as you can see, this can be done in three steps, which is O of one operation. So next, let's take a concrete example and finish up this, uh, this algorithm. So here, our pattern is ABC and our text is this, and we want to see if this pattern exists in this text or not. So first we calculate the hash of the pattern. So the hash of the pattern, as we discussed before, will be value of A, so one plus B, value of B will be 2 into 3 raised to 1 plus value of C will be 3 into 3 raised to 2. So this value will be 1 plus 6 plus uh, 27. And this will be uh, 27 plus 7, which will be 34. So the hash of ABC is 34. And let's store this somewhere. Now we're going to take substrings of length 3 in this text and see which, have, which matches this pattern. And if which matches the hash of this pattern, and if it does, then we'll compare the actual substrings. So we start with ABE. So the so the pattern so the hash for ABE will be A is one plus uh, two raised two into three raised to one plus five value of five into three raised to two. So this will be one. So this will be six. This is six, and this is. Uh, 45 plus 1, so this is 52. So 52 does not match with 34. So okay, so this is not same as this, we know for sure. Now we are going to roll forward, which means that we are going to look for BDE, BED. And to do that, we'll, what we are going to do is we are going to apply this algorithm to calculate the new hash. So to do that, first we are going to subtract from 52 the value of A, which is 1, and then divide this by 3, so this will become 17. And in this 17, I'm going to add the value of B, which is 4 
into prime raised to 2. So this will become 17 plus 36. And this is 36, 46, 53, 56, and 53. So this value will become 53. So 53 is the hash of BED. And as you can see, I calculated in O of 1 time. And uh, 53 is not same as 34. Okay, so we move on to the next character. So to move on to the next character from 53, we are going to subtract the value of B. Value of B is 2. So this again becomes 51. We divide it by 3, so this becomes 17. And then I'm going to add A. So A is 1 into 3 raised to 2. So this is 9. So this value becomes 26. So 26 is 26. The hash of EDA is 26, which is again not same as 34. So we are going to move forward and look for DAB. So first we are going to subtract the value of E, which is 5. So here we are going to be left with 21. Then we divide it by the prime number 3. So here we are going to be left with 7. And then we are going to add B, which is 2 into 3 raised to 2. So this number is 7 plus uh, 9 into 18. So this number is 25. Okay, so 25 is also not same as 34. So right now we are at 25. Finally, we are going to look at the hash for this. So 25, first we are going to subtract the value of D. So 25 minus D is uh, 21. Then we are going to divide it by prime number. So this becomes 7. And then I'm going to add 3 into 3 squared. And this will become 7 plus uh, 18. Uh, 7 plus, sorry, 27. And this number is 34. So this number finally matches this, the, hash, uh, the hash of the pattern. So once we find a match, what we're going to do is we're going to compare this substring with this, this pattern with this substring. So A is a match with A, B is a match with B, and C is a match with C. So it means that this pattern exists in this text at this location, and the location is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this should return 4. So hopefully this helps you understand how we are doing pattern matching using Rabin Card's algorithm. So next, let's analyze the time complexity and look at how, uh, how applications are using Rabin Card algorithm. So the time complexity for this algorithm will be O and N, where N is the length of the pattern and N is, the, N is the length of the text. And the reason for that is if the hash function is bad or if we are totally unlucky, then every substring hash would match with the pattern hash, even though the substring is not same as the pattern, in which case the total work done will be M, N. The applications for Rabin Carp algorithm includes, involves finding plagiarism. So let's say if there are hundreds of documents, you can generate the hash of these documents and then for whatever documents the hash is same, you can compare against each other to see if the documents, if the, actually the contents of the document are same or not. And this is where this algorithm really excels well. Another application is if you have a text and if you have like multiple patterns of same length and you want to see which of these patterns exist in this text, this algorithm is very useful. What we do is, let's say we generate the hash of all this pattern. So let's say the hash is x1, x2, x3. Then we put this hash and the corresponding pattern into a map. So x1 with gab, x2 with xyz, and x3 with abc. And then we generate the hash of, sub, of length 3 in this original text and see which hash matches one of this hash and if they do then you compare that substring with this substring to see if there is a substring match or not. So as you can see this improves the performance really well. So this is all I have to talk about Rabin Carl algorithm. Next let's look at the code for this algorithm. The main function here is pattern search. It takes in the text and the pattern. The prime number we're going to use here is 101. M is the length of the pattern, N is the length of the text. First we generate the pattern hash by calling this create hash function. Then we generate text hash by again calling create hash function. In, in here we are generating the hash from z for first m characters of text going from 0 till m minus 1. 
Then we go into this for loop going from i1 to i less than equal to n minus m plus 1 because these are the so many m uh, length substrings we can have in text. If parent hash which we generated before is same as text hash which again we generated before and if the characters from i'm arranging from i minus 1 till i plus m minus 2 in text is same as characters in pattern going from 0 till m minus 1 it means that we found a match in which case we return the index at which the match is found which is i minus 1 otherwise we regenerate the hash for the text by dropping the ith minus 1 character of the text and adding i plus m minus 1th character uh, and if we never if we never go into this if condition in this for loop then in the end we return minus 1 indicating that this pattern is not found in this text let's look at create hash create hash is very simple it takes in the string and the point till which you want to generate the hash in the string and you go for loop from i uh, 1 till the end and generate the hash by multiplying the ascii character with a power function uh, prime raised to i and then return the hash for recalculating hash we take in the string for which the uh, hash needs to be recalculated, the old index which needs to be dropped, the new index which needs to be added, the old hash and the pattern length. New hash is going to be old hash minus uh, the ASCII of the old uh, index which we discussed before in the video. Then new hash will be new hash by prime. And finally new hash will be new hash plus ASCII of the new index in the string into prime raised to pattern minus one. And then we return the new hash. So this is all I have to talk about uh, Rabin Carp algorithm. Uh, if for the users who like Python, I also have Python code in my GitHub repository. Uh, again, the time complexity for this algorithm in the worst case will be OMN. Please like this video, share this video, comment on this video, check out my Facebook page and check out my GitHub link. Thanks again for watching this video.